thank you so much for the tremendous response to video number one in this series. I guess this is a subject which has been on everybody's mind, but I have to admit I'm feeling a little bit insecure about my chances of success. Prusa's the best. Nobody beats Prusa. He's not even a man. He's a 3D printer. And by the time I'm done, the Ender 3 will not resemble a Prusa i3 Mark III, so we're going to have an apples to oranges comparison on our hands, which means that we're gonna to have to fall back on a results-driven competition to decide the winner. Um, but if that's the case, the Ender 3 already produces prints which, if not every bit as good as a Prusa, are really darn close. So the Ender 3 kinda of already satisfies the as good as a Prusa for way less money. But all of those little features that you find on a Prusa, things like uh, detecting whether your filament is jammed in the extruder or whether your print nozzle has collided with the part that has peeled, those are really nice to have. And thankfully, the Duet with the RepRap firmware uh, gives us all of those abilities. Now, the RepRap firmware is superior to Marlin. Shots fired, I know, and it's absolutely incredible what Marlin has been able to achieve uh, running on 8-bit processors. But listen, my Game Boy from 1989, this thing had an 8-bit processor, and I know that newer's not always better, but uh, I think we can use the extra processing power on our 3D printers in the year 2018. So let's get busy installing the RepRap firmware on the Duet with all of the extra features. I've made some good progress on the wiring. I'd say I'm a little more than halfway done, but I wanna take this moment to talk about some of the issues uh, with wiring. It's nothing too challenging. There's just, you know, there's always details. The first is, um, you know, in one of my past videos, I mentioned that you should tin your leads before putting them into the terminal blocks. And wow, I got a lot of hate for that, a lot of flaming. So, you know, I think that there's some governments, and I don't think it's the United States government, but there's some governments around the world that basically say you're not allowed to tin your leads because I guess the solder can soften over time and uh, it makes a weaker connection, which a weaker connection is more resistance and then it gets hot and then it's a fire danger. So um, I guess the preferred solution is to use uh, crimp connectors like this. And um, so you crimp these on there and then you don't have any problem. Uh, so this gets crimped and then the screw block holds the crimp. But conveniently, uh, this allows me to also sort of splice in another little bit of extra wiring here. And this extra wiring that you're seeing is actually the, the second thing to talk about. Uh, a couple of astute commenters were asking me how I'm going to drop the voltage down for the part cooling fan. And this is a buck converter, also known as a step-down voltage regulator. And it basically uh, allows you to do exactly that. So I'll turn 24 volts into 12 volts by dialing down that little uh, potentiometer right there on the, uh, on the board. So thankfully, uh, these crimp connectors actually come in the, uh, or sorry, I should say ferrules. These ferrules come in the kit from Duet. So it's a very thorough kit. I, I mean, I really, I can't speak highly enough of Duet. And I like to do, I don't have the special tool, so I like to use sort of a dull pair of uh, dikes or wire cutters, but not flush cutters. Flush cutters I find to be too sharp. So uh, I like these duller ones. And I just sort of do this like alternating crimps up the line. And that holds it nice and securely, and it will mount uh, well into the uh, terminal block as well. Now the next thing to talk about is these um, connectors for the stepper motors. And I was able to get away with this with the last install, uh, and you can probably check that out like right here. Um, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get away with it this time. Hopefully the pairs of uh, wires are, are gonna be sort of the same, the pairs that go to the steppers. In case you don't know, stepper motors uh, have two pairs of, of wires. Anyway, so what you do here is you take your flush cutters and you just trim off these um, these safety, you know, so you can't pull them back out when they're going into the different 
plugs, right? So you trim these off like this, and then this style of plug will now work on the board here, or will work on the duet, you see? It plugs in there. It doesn't have the pullback protection. It's not easy to pull off, but it is possible. It's a little bit easier than uh, with the way that Duet intends you to do it. And that is with uh, one of these plugs. So you can see this is the plastic part that just plugs right onto there, and it does have the little catch, so uh, it's harder to pull back off. Now the plastic plug is only uh, half of the job there when uh, doing the wiring the way that Duet intends you to do the wiring. So the first part is you, you take your wire here and you strip just a little bit of wire uh, insulation off the tip. So you have just a little bit of wire exposed there. I suppose you can have a little bit more. There's a, a margin of error that's uh, pretty substantial. And then Duet sends you this bag with all these little crimp connectors. Um, and these things are fantastic. but I gotta say, uh, in order to install them correctly, you have to have the right tool. And the right tool for the job here is this one. And in fact, this one isn't even as good uh, as the one that I wish I had, which is the, what is it? Um, EDM, that's Electro Discharge Machining. It's an EDM wire cut jaws. So they have very little clearance between the two, the two sides of the jaws. Whereas with this one, it's um, MIM, that's metal injection molded. And so the jaws here just don't have the tolerances. They're not quite as tight together. So I'll show you guys what that leads to here in a minute. But basically what I do is put that wire in like so, making sure that the uh, insulation is only on the back uh, sort of crimp moment there. So I do that like so. And then I found with my tool here, I need to sort of pre-crimp and I'm just giving a little light squeeze. I just sort of need to make it just a little bit more narrow on that one there. So this is sort of involved, you can see. Um, then I get my crimp connector going here. And once it's all in place, I can just squeeze it on down until this little tang here does that. And that means that it's fully done. Now it's kind of stuck again with the clearance in the MIM, but that leads to a real nice crimp job. And then I'm able to take this um, and put it into the plastic clip here. So just putting it in like so, all the way until it clicks and it will not pull back out. <laughs> unless your wire breaks like mine just did. So so yeah, I always give it a good tug to see if I'm gonna have a problem such as that, and I did, so now I have to redo that job. But I'll do that off camera. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and clip all of these and install them in the correct uh, spot so that my stepper motors are now wired up. And the only thing left to do <clears throat> is the, um, the wiring for the BL Touch. And this is actually fairly involved. Um, I'll show you in the wiring diagram or little animation here in a second, um, exactly how you connect the BL Touch. But the bottom line is that you cannot use these crimp connectors that were sent to you by Duet. So you have to come up with a different solution. And there's two options for you. One is the more fancy and cleaner option, and that is to get a DuPont crimp connector kit. And these connectors function exactly the same uh, as the ones from Duet do, and they use the same tool here. Um, and so you're basically just wiring up uh, into you know these plastic parts instead. But the other option is that you can just buy these, they're called jumper wires on eBay or Banggood or AliExpress or wherever you get your parts. And this is what those, uh, those wires look like. And if you'll notice, they have, uh, you can get male, and this is male to female, the set that I have. And the females will plug in onto the uh, pins right here in the header, so. You can just clip those and wire them to the, the BL Touch wiring, or you can do the professional version, which is what I'm gonna do using the, uh, the DuPont crimp connector. So I redid this crimp connector just to show you guys what a good crimp job looks like. Uh, you can see that nice secure fastening to the, uh, the insulation there, and also a nice uh, crimp job on the wire portion. So that will hold quite well, and I can pull on that, and it doesn't come apart this time. But if I turn it over, we can start to see on the back side here uh, that the wire, or the, I'm sorry, the metal is a little bit mangled. Uh, it's not bad, but uh, it definitely sort of is misshapen, and that's just because the tolerance between the two halves of the jaws is not good enough. And so there's sort of like gaps, and the, the metal tries to fill in those gaps. So. The more expensive version of that tool I think uh, would be nicer to have, but I haven't tested it, so I can't say that for certain. 
I got another Noctua fan. Uh, the funny thing is this one came in a smaller box, but it's a bigger fan. It looks like this, and it's uh, supposedly their step down. Not the most expensive fan they have, but it has all of the quiet features. You can see the, uh, the profile to those blades, and that's supposed to make it real quiet. So this is going to be my case cooling fan. Okay, everything is plugged in and ready to go, but before I turn this on, there's a few things that I just need to be very careful of. I really don't want to burn out my 12 volt fans. That would be this fan, as well as the J-Head cooling fan, that 40 millimeter one that we installed in the last video. So um, I have the fans disconnected, and I have the um, two uh, buck converters, step down voltage regulators, uh, ready to go. I'm ready to measure them so that I can dial them in to being 12 volts. Uh, let's see if something goes wrong here because I actually have not turned this thing on yet. So you're going to be witness to the magic blue smoke if I did something wrong. Let's just double check that I got the polarity right. That's the most important thing here. And that is correct. So here we go. Keep your fingers crossed. Well, I heard the BL Touch go through its auto start routine, and it looks like I already have the voltage uh, darn close to 10 volts. So let's just dial that up a little bit to get to 12 volts. That'll do. So I'm going to unplug that from the uh, from the multimeter there, and I'm going to plug in the J head cooling fan. I bet you guys can't even hear a difference, but let me show it to you. Pretty cool. That one's a lot higher coming out of the factory. So I'm actually going to try something here. And I'm going to turn this down to 10 volts. Um, because I don't think that I need that massive fan uh, to be running at full speed uh, to cool the little duet board here. So I think 10 volts will spin it fast enough. And it will be a whole lot quieter this way as well. So we're ready to go with this. Uh, step down voltage regulator as well. Awesome sauce. Okay, so I'm ready to install the firmware. But before I do that, I wanna give you guys a quick tour in case you're following along at home and you wanna follow my wiring here. Um, the first thing I wanna say is it's not necessary to do any of that crimping that I was showing you guys. You can use um, male to female jumper wires. These are like three bucks for a lot of them. Um, and you can do like I've done here with the part cooling fan. So you see how it connects to this always on slot. And I haven't changed out the connector yet to be the duet style connector. So yeah, you could do this everywhere and not have to spend the money on the tool or anything like that. It's not gonna be as clean, but meh. Okay, so these front two fan slots are always on. And normally you'd have like your case cooling fan coming off of that. But instead I've just wired the case cooling fan here directly off of the 24 volt input into the board. Make sure you get your polarity correct there. I have my very first 3D printer, I burned up the board by getting that wrong. Um, have not tested the stepper motors yet, hoping that they're gonna work with the stock connectors like I've, like I've done here. Um, this out here is your thermistor for your um, extruder, and then your thermistor, that's your temperature sensor for the bed, is down here in the lower, uh, your lower right. And the bed, hot and cold, or powered and ground go here and here. Now the most complicated bit of the wiring here for the install is getting the BL Touch wired in correctly. We do not have the uh, Duex connector, that's the kind of daughter board that will plug into this whole header uh, assembly here. So instead, we're just sort of hot wiring it in. And you can see uh, the black and the white wires go there on the far side of that connector. And then we've got at the top right, red, brown, and then skip three pins and put the yellow or orange, whatever color you want to call that. Um, and we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, fanciness in the software, but nothing too bad. The last two things which I need to mention are the wiring for the um, filament sensor. And this goes ground, power, signal. So whatever color is a wire that you're going to use for that, the, uh, the order here from your left to right is ground power signal. Signal also known as out and power also known as VN. Okay, so then the final thing is I currently have two fans wired to 
the always on slots just so that I could test them. But in actuality, uh, the slot right here, yeah, right there, the one right next to it, that's where our um, part cooling fan is gonna go. And then this one right here is where we're gonna put our um, J head cooling fan. The wiring is done. So all that I have to do now is install the firmware. <laughs> all that I have to do. I mean, it's really not that hard. Uh, there on the laptop, you can see the web interface, which is controlling the Tevo little monster. Um, and tune in on Monday for Mechanism Monday. I actually kind of made this video to show all of you guys my workflow uh, through from Rhino, through the slicer, and then through the Duet interface to print. So uh, just to give you guys an idea of how that goes. But next time, uh, I will be installing the firmware in on this printer so that we can do the same, connecting through Wi-Fi. Um, but I want to take one more moment here to address all of the comments that I've been getting telling me that I don't understand open source because of the, I didn't realize it was controversial, but I guess I have a controversial and very strong stance about supporting original creators and how it's amoral to buy knockoff products. So um, this is, a pretty deep subject and I'm gonna make its own video because it certainly deserves its own video but um, you know what the bottom line is this no matter what the legality of open source is and we are gonna cover that um, you cannot support copycats forever or everything will stagnate and we won't get anything new so nice new things come from original creators and in our case with 3d printing the original creators love their product and produce the best quality product on the market. That would be the BL Touch and the, um, the Duet board. Uh, so they're both produced in first world countries and Paris, who invented and produces the BL Touch, she's based out of Korea, which is a very high cost of living country. So if she was making her product in China, of course she would be able to charge less money, but she's not, she's in Korea. So um, the Duet is made in England, also a first world country, also very expensive to make things there. So this is the reason why you pay premium money for a premium product, but you get the quality. So it's the moral thing to do, you get higher quality and you get the support. Go check out the Duet forum, it's unmatched. You have any questions about your Duet install, they'll help you out there. So uh, you don't get that from any Chinese product. And in fact, if you bought the knockoff clone Chinese duet, you're probably gonna end up on Duet's website looking for help, which means that you are stealing services from Duet because you did not pay for their product and yet you're using uh, their support network. So that's really amoral and guys just don't do it. Support original creators. I like new things, don't you? Let's, let's keep the ball rolling and keep rewarding these people for bringing uh, awesome new stuff to market. All right, well that's it for this video, so tune in next time when we install the firmware. Thanks for watching.